Now the other big event happening this month is the Perseid meteor shower. This is an annual meteor shower. It's a kind of a summertime favorite because it happens when people are outdoors camping and doing that kind of stuff. So it's a very famous shower. Uh, it typically produces about one meteor per minute. So it's kind of an old faithful that way, although sometimes it slips. But this year, we're actually expecting that it might do something a little bit different and we're looking forward to it. Now the Perseid meteors are particles that are shed by the periodic comet Swift-Tuttle, which uh, circles the sun about every 130 years. It was discovered back in 1862 and uh, it was also last seen in 1992 and 93 when this picture was taken. Back in 1862, shortly after the comet was discovered, the Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli, also infamous for discovering the canals on Mars, uh, found that uh, the comet and the Perseid meteors follow the, exactly the same orbit. So that linked the comet to meteors for the first time. And uh, basically we're just looking along the comet's orbit as we see these particles hit the Earth's atmosphere. They're kind of moving parallel to each other. So from our perspective, they seem to spread out uh, in the sky. Now, um, the particles don't stay exactly in the comet's orbit. They get uh, moved around by the gravity of the other planets. What we see here is a view taken a year ago. This is uh, the calculated orbits of a number of fireballs that were recorded by NASA cameras. And you can see they kind of look like that Schiaparelli diagram, but they're actually spread into much more complicated orbits than his, his diagram showed. Um, so this is the outlying part of the shower, so it's really already going on. But when we get to the maximum, we see many more meteors, and you can see that these particles get spread quite a bit. What's interesting about this year is that particles that were shed back in 1862 and also about 300 years before that have both been moved by Jupiter so that they'll uh, both collide with the Earth again. Now, whether this will really strengthen the shower or not, we really don't know, so we're not guaranteeing anything. But, uh, I don't know, I'm planning to watch uh, all, all of the shower I can from 10 o'clock in the evening on Thursday all the way till dawn on Friday, which happens about 4.40 in the morning. So, if something unusual, or actually something sort of expected happens, uh, there could be a really good strong shower that entire time. To watch it, look up to the northeast. We look for the constellation Perseus. But the meteors can appear anywhere in the sky, since that's the direction they'll seem to be coming from. And to watch it, you don't need any special equipment. Just lie back in a chaise lounge or a deck chair and bring warm clothing, maybe sleeping bag and pillows and munchies and all kinds of stuff like that. Don't look at lights. Turn off your cell phones. Don't play Pokemon because that kind of light actually desensitizes your, your view. And once you look at it, you've got to wait about 10 or 15 minutes until you'll be seeing meteors again. So uh, avoid bright lights. Also, get out of the city. The city is a terrible place to try watching the meteor shower. You might see only 10 to, at, mo at most, 30% of the meteors you would from a dark sky. So plan to travel out to the Mojave Desert or whatever your favorite wilderness place is to see uh, the m maximum number of meteors.